before I, I get started, and this has something to do with the lesson, but I want to read to you what Jamie Foxx, I don't know if y'all heard of it before, mm -hmm. Jamie, Jamie Foxx, he was at a, a national televised Soul Train Awards convention like, and he says, Jamie Foxx says, it's like church over here. It's like church in here. First of all, give honor to God and our Lord and our Savior, Barack Obama. Jamie Foxx said that? Jamie Foxx said that at this award ceremony. When he mentioned God, some of the crowds cheered. Then when he mentioned Obama, the crowd erupted. This is, ter this is troubling because although the event was media stunned, the comment was still blasphemous. To see the crowd cheer more loudly for Obama than for God is also disturbing. This has happened recently. I, I read that on the internet and I'm like, oh my gosh. Of course, Christians on there, they're saying anything having to do with Jamie Foxx television or anything having to do with him, we ought to have him just cut off until he repents or apologizes for what he said. Which, truly and honestly, when anyone, anyone calls a person, that's my God and my Savior, we need to cut ourselves from that person. And that's part of what we're learning here. Who do we cut ourselves off of? I, I just so happened to read that on the internet today, and I thought, I got to read this tonight. But that's the way some people... I mean, he, when they said, I want to thank my Lord, my, my, my God, you know, they got, he got cheered. But when he said, Obama's my, my Savior, Obama, my Lord, Savior, Obama, he said, it says the, the place erupted. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Things are, I mean, there, stuff like this, it's getting to where it's no longer sneaking in. You hear what I'm saying? Stuff is no longer sneaking in. It's just coming out plainly. And the thing, next thing I'm going to teach on is most of these uh, cults, they have like a pyramid. And one of the signs of a religious being a cult is leadership. The one who founded the religion, he's at the top of the pyramid. He's number one. And then it's like this. We're down here. Everybody, all the laymen are down here. And as you grow in that religion, they reveal a little bit more to you and you step up the ladder. Okay. But most religions are like a pyramid. They have one leader. Just like the Jehovah's Witness, they have Charles Russell. He founded that religion. The Mormons, they have Joseph Smith. Whether they're dead or alive, that's still their leader. The one they call Mother Teresa. This is what Mother Teresa said in a quote. Oh, oh I hope I am converting. I don't mean what you think. If in... Coming face to face with God, we accept Him in our lives, then we are converting. We become a better Hindu, a better Muslim, a better Catholic, a better whatever we are. What approach we would use. For me, naturally, it would be a Catholic one. For you, it may be Hindu. For someone else, it might be Buddhism, according to one's conscience. What God is in your mind, you must accept. Now, this is Mother Teresa. This is a quote from her. It doesn't matter what religion. Well, here she's saying, if you're Hindu, if you're Buddhist, whatever is your God, whatever is in your mind, that's who you accept. He said, she said, of course, God, you know, is hers. But she's saying it's okay to accept these other ones. And this is a, uh, a woman that a lot of people respected. A lot of people looked toward. And look what she's saying. Roman Catholics, they believe Mary is the mother of God. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's, some of these things are so obvious that you're like, did you hear what was just said? The Roman Catholics believe that Mary is the mother of God, and they say it in the rosary, Holy Mary, mother of God. And what, I mean, what do the Catholics do with that? I mean, they really, really believe that Mary is the mother of God? Mary is the mother of Jesus, the Son of God. But they're saying, Holy Mary, Mother of God. This, they also accept church traditions as being the source of their authority. 
their traditions. Catholics, they distinguish, distinguish between excusable sins and mortal sins. They, 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 they divide them. There's excusable sins and then there's mortal sins. As we know, the Bible says sin is sin. There's no greater sin than the other. Sin is just plain sin. Salvation comes with the church sacraments and rituals. That's how you get salvation in the Catholic Church, is doing the sacraments and rituals that they have. They wear robes of different colors to show how, how educated they are. How high up are they in the pyramid? The pyramid I'm talking about? Yeah. The more you learn, the more that you accept, the higher you go up. This is, this is cult. This is what cults do. Luke chapter 20 verse 46 Beware of the scribes Who's the scribes? That's religious leaders That was religious leaders It says beware of the scribes Which desire to walk in long robes And love greetings in the markets Does this, does this remind you of other men Who love to have greetings in the marketplace Where out in the public They like to be recognized because they have the white collar on or whatever. They like to be recognized. It says, And low greeting in the markets, and the highest seats in the synagogues, and the sheaf rooms at the feast. I mean, they like to sit at the head of the table. Look who I am. This is where I sit. It says, Beware of these men. These religious men that have long robes. The ones who want to be noticed as being men of God, supposedly. Luke twenty forty six. But right here it says, the Lord's plainly telling us, hey, beware of these men. And what did he say? He said, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, religious leaders, he said, unless your righteousness is higher than theirs, you're not going to see the kingdom of heaven. So God is saying right here, these scribes, they're not even going to see the kingdom. Men who act like this are not going to see the kingdom of heaven. And unless we're higher than that, meaning our hearts, they do it for show. Unless our hearts are right with the Lord, we're not going to see the kingdom of heaven. This is not the righteousness of God, all right, doing these things. That is not being right with God, showing yourself to be higher than others. Praying to saints that they believe that can do things for you. Catholics have many of them. They have St. Anthony. They pray, for, they pray to him if you lose something. They pray to him. They have St. Jude. For a hopeless one in the family, someone who's maybe that's a bad person, you pray to Saint Jude for that person. Saint Gerald for pregnant women. They have Saint Blaze. If you have a sore throat or some kind of sickness like that, you pray to him. They have Saint Christopher, which will watch you when you're traveling. Nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible, and any, if there's any Catholics listen to the CD, I challenge you right now. Read your Bible. If you see anywhere in the Bible where it says to pray to these, to these saints, then call me and tell me. And I will change my view. But until then, it's wrong. Not even Mary. It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible to pray to Mary. It doesn't have it in there. Now on Mary, the belief of the Immaculate Conception. Now I don't know if, I'm not sure if all Catholics know what they're saying when they say the Immaculate Conception. What they're saying is Mary is without sin. That's what they're saying. And that's why they pray to her. Because she's without sin. She's the mother of God. They pray to her. Even though there's nowhere in the Bible. In fact the Bible plainly says in 1 Timothy. Chapter 2 verse 5. For there is one God. And one mediator. One mediator. Between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. Did they say there was two mediators? Did it say the man Christ Jesus and Mary? That's not what the Bible says. So why do Catholics do this? Why do Catholics pray to Mary? When right here it plainly says there's only one God that you pray to. And the only way you can pray to him is through Christ Jesus. But yet they pray to Mary. Maybe they didn't hear what Mary said in Luke chapter 1. Verse 46 and 47. It says... And Mary said, My soul doeth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Mary said this. Mary is saying, I rejoice in God my Savior. 
Only sinners need saviors, right? right? Only sinners. And Mary's right here saying, God is my savior. She's not saying right here, God is my son. Right. She's saying, God is my savior. Mary's admitting right here that she's a sinner. What do Catholics do with this? You know why they don't do anything with this? Because they don't read it. And they're listening to the man above them. The one who with the robe on. The one with the nice collar. These men are perfect to the Catholics. They have no sin. This is what the Catholics believe. They're perfect men. Now also, baby baptism. So again, show me in the Bible where any baby got baptized. Read the Bible. Read it. Read the New Testament. Jesus was a grown man when he got baptized. The disciples, grown men. Everyone that it talks about if they got baptized were grown men and women. Didn't say anything about babies or children getting baptized. But yet the Catholics do that. Why? Because these men up the pyramid who know it all tells them. That's why they do it. That's why they, they believe it because these men said that. Confessing your sins to a priest and him having the power to tell you, okay, go say so many Hail Marys or Our Fathers and uh, you'll get forgiveness. Is that in the Bible? Forgiveness comes from your heart. When you're going to the Lord from your heart for forgiveness, He forgives you right then and there. The Lord doesn't tell us, okay, you want me to forgive you? Then you need to do this, this, and this. No, the Lord said, if you come to me from your heart, Asking for, for forgiveness. Not in your brain, but from the heart. He will forgive you. And not only will He forgive you, but He says, I'll forget about it. As soon as I forgive you, I'll forget about it. That's what the Lord has said. But they have men who tell you how to get forgiveness for whatever sins you've committed that you're confessing. They also believe in purgatory. And it's a temporary state where those who die in the state of grace are purified of their sins over time. They're, they go to, it's not hell, it's purgatory. And to them it's a place, it's not hell, it's not heaven, but it's a place where they go, and Catholics can pray them out of there. Again, if there's any Catholics listening to the CD, if you, has, if you haven't shut me off yet, does your Bible say anything about this? Read your Bible, read it. And if you can find anything in there that says anything like this, I, again, I will change my teaching. Like I said, the pyramid, it's, it's a leadership. There's only one that, that God speaks to. Just like he spoke to Joseph Smith. You know, There's only one who founded the religion. And they, they look at this man as being without fault. He founded the religions and all, the, all his followers see him without fault. They will sometimes teach that they're the only ones who can interpret the scriptures. That's why they don't, have, they don't have the laymen, those at the bottom of the pyramid, they don't have them reading the Bible. They have men that they teach. They have men, when they go up the ladders, they become teachers because they believe in what this man says. And they take these men who have accepted what the leader said, they use them to go out and teach the laymen what the Bible says. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It comes from here down to the teachers, then the teachers bring it to us. Because we're too dumb to understand the Bible. According to them. That's pretty much what they're saying. These men, these men have taken the place of the Holy Spirit. Because when I read the Bible, I depend on the Holy Spirit to show me what the Scriptures mean. And we as Christians say, well, this is what we should do, right? Depend on the Holy Spirit to teach us what the, what the Word of God is saying. The only ones who have High titles in that pyramid are the only one who are the ones who can tell you what the Bible says, and you can't even question it. If you if you're if you're a layman and you're questioning what their what their what their belief is, what they're saying, then they'll probably kick you out. Or if you're above, if you you're a layman but you've gone a few steps up, but now you're kind of in the middle and you're like you're questioning what the leader's saying. Well, that's probably as high as you're going to go. You're not going to go any higher. As soon as you show any kind of doubt, they'll stop you right there. This is what cults do. You can't question them. You can't. You have people who, that believe that. 
That's why they don't read their Bible. They they have taken these men, and like I said, they've put them between us and God. They've made them the Holy Spirit. Now, we do have leaders. Now, these are leaders in cults that are in pyramids. Okay, these are cults. Now, we do have leaders in our churches. In the Baptist church, the Pentecost church, we have leaders. They're called pastors. They're called elders. But this is not why the Lord put them there. He didn't put them there to be Lord with a capital air, L, to be Lord over us. Okay, he didn't put them there for that. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, get the, God is, the Lord is talking about the pastors and elders, and He tells them, this is what the pastors and elders are for the church. He says in 1 Peter chapter 5, God is telling them to feed His flock. And as we know, a lot of these men, they glorify themselves. When they're, they're, these religious men, most of them, a lot of them, do it to glorify themselves. Just like in Luke chapter 18, verses 10 and 11. It's talking about two men here. It says, two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee. Pharisee is what? A religious leader, right? And the other a publican, just a layman. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, this is what the religious leader is saying, is praying. He's saying, God, I thank you. That I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. So he's pointing them at himself as he's praying to God. He's saying, look how good I am. I'm not like that sinner over there. So what's, what's this religi religious leader doing? He's taking glory in, on to himself. And that's what he wants people to do. He wants people to do the same thing. To glorify him. Just like this Pharisee did right here. He pointed to the other, to the sinner as, look, I'm not like that. These are religious leaders that the Bible's talking about right here. Matthew 23, 9. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Again, I'm sorry, but I have to address the Catholics. Father so-and-so. Now, I know the leaders of this church that are up the pyramid. I know they read this verse. When it says, hey, don't, don't give nobody the title as father. You have a father who birthed you. And then you have your spiritual father, which is God. That's it. But this religion, has, they have men, religious leaders in there that are called father. Now, why do the Catholics do that? The laymen Catholics? Because they don't read the Bible. I was raised Catholic, and when I started reading the Bible, I read this right here, and my jaw just dropped. I'm like, I can't believe that. This religion I was in, we called these men Father so-and-so. But then I read the Bible, the Word of God, and it says, Call no man your father upon the earth. So, okay, Jesse, you got a choice. Are you going to believe your religion? Are you going to be what? Are you going to believe what the Word of God just said? Amen. And they have men who like titles of honor, like Reverend so and so. There was only one who was Reverend. There is no man Reverend. I hate the title Reverend so and so. Hebrews twelve twenty eight. Wherefore. We receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So God should be the only one we should have reverence to. He is reverend. Not no man, but men like to be called reverend. Reverend. They like to be called father. Are these men of God? The Pope. When he goes down the street, thousands of people line the streets. Throwing roses at him. He's accepting worship. The disciples of God said, Oh no, he told, they told the people, Dude, don't worship us. We're just man, just like you. Even the angels in heaven said, Oh, don't worship us. You only worship God. But this man is accepting worship. This religious 
man in this pyramid, the top leader up here, the Pope, is accepting worship. And that's strictly against the Word of God. Jesus says in Matthew 16, 18, And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now when Jesus said, Thou art Peter, upon this rock, he wasn't saying Peter was the rock. He asked Peter, What do you believe it takes to get to heaven? And Peter told him. And, God, and Jesus said, Because of that belief, because of what you just said, upon this rock, what you just said, upon the foundation of salvation, this is how I'm going to build my church. Not on Peter, but on Peter's belief that Jesus Christ was the foundation of salvation. Because that's how Peter replied. That's who our leader is. We do not have a man at the top of a pyramid. Jesus, period. That's it. Jesus is our leader. If we accept anyone under Jesus, a man, what did I say earlier? Last week. In Psalms, it says, It's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in a man. So our leader is Jesus, period. Anyone who is a true born-again Christian, your leader is Jesus. There is, you should not have a man who is your leader. Like I said, we have pastors, we have elders, we have teachers. And God put us here. But it's not because they're above us. It's just that's the way the Lord feeds us. He helps us to grow through these, through these men. To reach these people that are in these cults, to reach them that are in the pyramid religion. They have to be, they've been taught the scriptures. They've been taught the scriptures on, on, on like what their faith is in. They've been taught that. Okay? Their faith is in whatever it is. Jehovah Witness, Mormons. Their faith is in that religion. So we cannot go to them and, and say, well, uh, Jesus was God. If you're talking to Jehovah Witness, you, you ain't going to touch him. Because his faith is solid. He does not believe Jesus is God. So what do we do? How do we reach these people? You reach them by talking about their leader. Okay, you talk about their leader, like the Jehovah Witness. For example, the Jehovah Witness said that the Lord was coming to establish his kingdom in 1914. It didn't happen. So they said it again, that he was coming to establish his kingdom. God was coming to establish his kingdom in 1918. It didn't happen. 1975, they did it again. It still hasn't happened. And this is their leader who's saying this. Three times he's been wrong. So now you, you, you show them that. Now it's up to them if they want to accept this false teacher, this false prophet, because that's what he is. You might, you know, how many times do you have to be wrong to be a false prophet? Well, if you, if you kill somebody, does that make you a murderer? Or you got to wait till you kill a few people before you become a murderer? No, as soon as you kill someone, you're a murderer, right? Well, as soon as this man was wrong at, his pro at what he prophesied, he was a false prophet. Right. It only takes one time. So even, even though we, can't, we don't go to him saying, no, really, Jesus is God. No, no, forget that. They, they've been taught, set against that. So now we go, okay, let's approach them this way. Let's show them that their leader is a false prophet. Okay, at least now you got them thinking. That's how we reach cult people, people that are in cults. Go to the leader. Because the leader will always be wrong. Whoever their leader is, is wrong. In John, 1 John, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Beloved, be, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. So what, I mean, Jehovah Witness. 
they do not believe Jesus is God. They believe that he was just a man. Just a man, a prophet. Like Isaiah, like Elijah, like like the other prophets. That's how that's who Jesus is. Okay, that's what they believe. The layman and the and the Jehovah Witness, the layman down here, they do not read the Bible. They have a man they have men who go to their houses and they teach them the what the what the scriptures say. Now it says it says to pray in First Timothy chapter two, verses one and two. It says to pray for our leaders. Even if they're not saved, we should pray for our leaders. We should pray for them and we should also obey them. As long as it doesn't go against God's belief, like I said before. That was that's for first Timothy chapter two, verses one and two. It talks about praying for our leaders. If it's a political leader, we need to pray for them. We need to pray for their salvation. Because like I said, political leaders are not Christians. You tell me one, one race where two men were going for an office. Show me one race where they weren't putting each other down. Christians don't do that. We as Christians, we do not put someone else down to make ourselves look better. And plus, we're not of this world. We're not of this world. So how are we going to run this world? The world is full of darkness. It's evil continually. So how is a Christian man going to get up there and run, run this world? It's not going to happen. So what we pray for our political leaders, and we pray for those so-called spiritual leaders, religious leaders, let me put it that way, who are lost, we pray for them. Now the Jehovah's Witness, they believe that the Bible has errors. They've re- they have rewritten their book, the Jehovah Witnesses book, Bible, they have rewritten it several times. They have a group of men who are called the society. They find mistakes in the Bible and they rewrite the Bible. But they've done it more than once. They've done it more than twice. I really don't know how many times they've done it, but they've done it several times. They rewrite the Bible. What's, what's the Lord say? He says, anyone who adds or takes away from his word... Woe unto them. I wouldn't want to be those men. I wouldn't want to be them. They have a booklet that they call the Watchtower. Stay away from it. Stay away from the Watchtower. Jehovah Witness, if they can sell it to you, they make so many points. Now, they, they, they have work your way of salvation. So if they can sell it to you, they make so many points. If you don't buy it, and if they can give it to you, they don't make as many points, but they get a few points for giving it to you if you accept it. This is, this is what they do. Now, me, myself, when I see a Watchtower magazine booklet somewhere, I get it and I throw it in the garbage. In fact, I was at St. Mary's Hospital, which is supposed to be a Catholic church, I mean hospital, and they had a Watchtower on one of the tables in the weight room. I called for the head lady, which was a lady, of, the, of that hospital, which was Catholic, I called her. I had them call her. I had her come, and I showed her the watchtower. I said, isn't this a Catholic hospital? She said, yes. I said, then what is this watchtower doing in here? I did that. But you know me. <laughs> but I showed her. This is a Catholic hospital, but you got a watchtower in here. This is Jehovah's Witness. This is a cult. Oh, we tell those people all the time not to bring them in here. It's on the table. I don't know how many people could have looked at it before somebody finally would have picked it up. But me, wherever I see them, I've seen them in, well, what they used to have, phone booths. I don't see them hardly anymore, but they used to have them in the phone booth, so whoever goes in to use the phone, they have the watchtower. Well, anywhere I'd see the watchtower, I would pick it up and throw it in the garbage can. Because it's nothing but lies. Joe wouldn't say they don't believe in the Trinity. Because the word Trinity isn't in the Bible. What did they do with Matthew 28, 19? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Three. When you have three, it's a trinity. 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Father, the Word, 
and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. It doesn't have to say this is a trinity. Just because it doesn't say the word the trinity. So they don't believe that three, these three are the trinity. Because the word's not in there. Most cults don't believe in hell either. Jehovah Witness, there's no heaven and there's no hell right now. That's what they, right now, if you're a Jehovah Witness and you die right now, you're just dead. The ones who go to heaven, the ones who go to hell, are the Jehovah Witnesses that are here when God comes back. Not Jesus, God. When God comes back, then there's a heaven and a hell for those. But if you die before he comes, then you're just dead. There is no hell. That's what they believe. And you got other cults that believe the same way. You have a man called Bruce Larson. He's a well-respected Presbyterian leader. Presbyterian. Supposedly a church of God. He's a popular preacher. He has 15 bestsellers, books. On one of his quotes in one of his books, he says, I simply don't think the world is going to hell as so many people seem to. That's what he's saying. This is a Presbyterian preacher who has a 15 bestsellers. And he's saying, I don't think that the world's going to hell like so many people think. He's going completely against the Word of God. Presbyterian pastor. People believe in karma. That's where you live one life, and then when you got, die, you come back as another, you know, either animal or, or another person. They believe that. They believe if you live a good life, you come back as a, as a good person. They believe if you lived a bad life, you were, if you was a bad person, you come back as an animal. And that's why the people in India, they believe in karma. They believe in reincarnation. And that's why they won't kill the, uh, the, the cattle for beef. Because they believe those are people. Who used, to be, who used to be people who now are come back as cattle. They won't kill the rats that are eating their wheat. Because they think the rats are people who used to be here. And now are rats. That's what karma is. When you die, you come back as something else. But they're starving over there because of their belief. Now, I do not believe in sending money or any kind of help to people who have another God and this is what they believe. They're, they're suffering because of their God, what they believe in. They have a false God. And that's why they're dying of, of uh, starvation. John chapter 9, verse 1 through 3. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from birth. Now, like I said just now, karma. They believe that when you die, if you was a good person, you come back as another person. Or if you was a bad person, you come back as an animal. Well, right here Jesus said, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Jesus answered and said, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents. So he wasn't a, a, a man that lived before and was a bad person. And when he came back again as another person, God made him blind because he was a bad person before. Now right here the Lord said, He or his parents didn't make him blind. He says, that he did it for the works of God should be manifest in him. Do you understand? Now, if you talk to people who believe in karma, oh, he must have been a bad person before because now he's come back as a blind person. That's why he's like that. That's what people who believe in reincarnation, believe in karma, that's what they believe. You have the Masons. If you belong to that lodge, if you're a Mason, now, I'm touching a very popular lodge here that a lot of men belong to. A lot of men that, that are in churches of God. Masons are very popular. But in the Mason Lodge, you cannot pray in the name of Jesus. You can pray, but you cannot pray in the name of Jesus. In fact, you can't even talk about Jesus. You cannot witness to another man about Jesus if you, if you belong to that lodge. This is the Masons. Now, if you want to know more about the Masons, there's a book out there. It's called The God Makers. It mainly talks about the Mormons, 
but it's also got the Masons in there. Now, if I, I'm not going to belong to a place where I can't witness about Jesus. Right. I'm not going to belong to anything that says, hey, you can't pray in the name of Jesus. So if there are Christian men in there, they need to get out of there. If someone's telling them, hey, you can't pray in the name or you can't even talk about Jesus, I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't belong to such a place. Now also, we have fortune tellers, people who read palms, which witchcraft. We have horoscopes. We have enchantments. All this is evil. Oh man, come on. Horoscopes? Yes. Horoscopes are evil. Let me read the scriptures to you. Colossians 2.8 don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. He's saying don't get up in men's ideals of earthly knowledge. What they think will get you to heaven. He says they do sound spiritual, but they're not of the Spirit of God. That's what he's saying. Because it's all empty deception and all it does is trick you to get you in. Leviticus 19.31 Do not defile yourselves by turning to mediums or to those who consult spirits of the dead, which means the same thing. I am the Lord your God. I mean, we had a show on TV, a, a series on TV called Mediums. It was a woman who spoke to the dead. And the reason they had that show like that is because that's, they have people who say they do that. There's all kinds of things on TV where they're showing people... Uh, getting in touch with the dead. That is evil. That is evil. That is evil. We need to stay away from it. Deuteronomy 18 verses 10 through 12. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his own son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that useth divination <laughs> or observer of times meaning sorcery or an enchanter meaning to be bewitched or a witch, or a charmer, which means cast his spells, or a consulter with familiar spirits, which we just talked about, mediums, or a wizard, a psychic, or a necromancer, which is the same thing as a medium, just about because they're calling the spirits from the dead. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, Meaning, it detests the Lord. The people who do this, it detests the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doeth drive them out from before thee. And the Lord said right here, He said, don't take part of this stuff. It's abomination to them. As Isaiah chapter 47, verses 12 through 14. Now use your magical charms. Use the spells you have worked at all these years. Maybe they will do you some good. Maybe they can make someone afraid of you. All the advice you receive has made you tired. Were all your astrologers, those stargazers who make predictions each month? Remember I said horoscopes? Let them stand up and save you from what the future holds. But they are like straws burning in a fire. They cannot save themselves from the flame. You will get no help from them at all. Now, people, and this is it's talking about horoscopes right here. People see horoscopes as being, oh, there's nothing wrong with horoscopes. The Lord just said it right here. Did he not? In his words, stargazers, astrologers who look to the stars. Second Timothy chapter 4. Verses 3 and 4. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. There's a time coming where people ain't going to listen to the Word of God. They will follow their own desires and look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. And that's happening today. They go to churches until, they, until the preacher's preaching what they like to hear. That's, that's, that's today. That is today. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. It's the word of God right here. Are your eyes being open? I mean, are, uh, I mean, me getting this ready for y'all. I'm like, this is so real. This is happening today. And when did, and when did the Lord write this book? 
thousands about I mean thousands of years ago he foreseen all this he knew what was going to happen and it's happening to the, to the T it's happening Christian science positive thinking same thing is not of the Lord the religion mind, mind science is a cult which they believe in positive thinking and growing positive confession movement is within the church Christian science is also a part of this movement Christian science it's not Christian nor is it science I don't even know why they call it Christian science they're neither one of them the woman Mary Eddy a Christian scientist it's her interpretation that that holds the key to the scriptures she says there is no death you just move to another place again there's people who don't believe in hell she says there is no death you just move to another life we got a lot of people who believe that this is what she believes she's a Christian Christian scientist well with a statement like that she's for sure showing she's not a Christian Kenneth Copeland Kenneth Hagen they're both leaders a lot of people listen to these two men a lot of people they got a big following or Gloria Copeland the wife of Kenneth Copeland Gloria Copeland in reference to a house she wanted to buy she wanted to buy this house and if in reference of that she says I began to see that I already had authority over that house and authority over the money I needed to purchase it I said and in the name of Jesus I take authority over the money I need and I command you to come to me in Jesus' name. Mentoristine spirits, you go and cause it to come. So, this is what she said. Now, to put it in a little bit better English, which my English ain't that good anyway, but what she's saying is there's a house she wanted. So, she put it in her mind that, that it was hers. And she's calling on the spirits to say, okay, give me the money and give me this house. In Jesus' name. Which we have a lot of that. Name it and claim it. I mean, that's what they say. Name it and claim it. Which I've already had a teaching on that. They take those... those uh, that's said, it, it, It's said in the Bible, but it's not talking about stupid things like this. It's talking about, hey, if you want knowledge, pray for it, I give it to you. Understanding? You know, pray for my will, and I will give it to you. But they totally take take those those verses out of context. And right here, she's she's saying she's taking authority over it, and she's gonna she's telling the, the spirits, "Hey, this is what I believe. This is what I want. Get it." And these Gloria Copeland, she's a a woman pastor. That right there is going against the word of God, because right. Timothy plainly says, "If your desire is to be a pastor, this is this is the the the." Uh, qualifications to being a pastor and is addressing men it says he should be the husband of one wife and so on but it's showing it's a man but we have women pastors that's going against the word of God anyone who's sitting under a woman pastor needs to leave because if she's not obeying what Timothy says about what qualifies you to be a pastor what else is she disobeying in the word of God right I mean this is the word of God those of you who don't believe it, go read Timothy. Timothy plainly says that. I think it's chapter 3. First or second Timothy, chapter 3, it tells you what the qualifications are for being a pastor. And just like these people here, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagin, they teach that if you're not right with God, that's why you're not driving no BMW. Because you're not right with God. If you don't have a two-story house or dead ten-bedroom house, you're not right with God. Because if you're right with God, He'd get you these things. This is what they teach. John the Baptist, the closest man I know that I've read about to God, lived in the wilderness. He didn't have no two-story mansion, three-story mansion. He lived in the woods and ate locusts. And this was a man of God. But right here, they're teaching, hey, if you don't have anything, it's because you're not right with God. They teach nothing but greed. That's what their teaching is. Norman Vincent Peale, he wrote a book, The Power of Positive Thinking, which sold more than 3 million copies. That's a lot. 
as a lot of people reading this book. A lot. The teaching of positive thinking is that first thing we must do if we wish to achieve and live the life of, of success, the life of plenty and happiness, is first of all to visualize it. Just see it first. If you want this thing, see it first. Positive thinking. We actually can create by what we visualize. We can create it by just thinking about it. This picture you hold in your mind will develop, develop the same way a film develops. Now this is what he's saying. If you start visualizing what you desire, you shall have it. You can have anything you desire if you want it badly enough and, be, and begin to visualize it. These are, these are preachers. This is what they're teaching. And then we're like, man, why is your church so big? They must really be men of God. No, these people like what they're hearing. All I got to do is visualize it and I can have it. Well, heck, I'm going to go to a church like that. If a preacher's talking like that, I'm gonna, that's where I'm going. That's because I'm stupid and don't know nothing. In 1984, on the Phil Donahue show, he said, this is what he said. Pop, back then, this was a very popular show, just like Oprah was. Well, Phil Donahue was the same way. And he said, this is what Phil Donahue said, he denied the necessity of being born again. I have my own personal relationship with God, and you've got yours. He says, I don't, see no, I don't see no reason to get born again. I have my own belief in God, is what he's saying. I don't see no reason to begin born again. And this was a very popular man on the TV show. Psalms 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and they delight in his ways. All these, all these are talking about us, what we want. Okay, but Psalm says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Meaning you follow the Lord. That's what you want. That's what our will is. That's what our want is, is to follow with the, the steps, the footsteps that the Lord has set before us. Not the fortune cookie that we read. Oh, Jesse, don't. Come on, fortune cookies, come on. Seriously, what is, what is in these fortune cookies? It's telling you... Uh, this can be you, or this can happen to you, or whatever. I'm sorry. Fortune cookies? I'm sorry. Just just let a little bit in. Ah, oh, fortune cookies, come on. Okay, well, go ahead and just let that little bit of sin in and see what happens. Just like the Bible says, a little leaveneth, leaveneth the whole lump, the whole loaf. Just let a little bit in. Now, those of you who are listening, you can't see this, but you... Right here, you let just a little bit in. Just a little. You can barely see, even see the space there. But you just let it in, and guess what? This is what starts happening. As you go further and further, it gets bigger and bigger. And more and more, it gets in your life. Just let a little bit in and see what happens. Do y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Are we wanting to know the truth? This is the truth. I'm telling you the truth right here. Amen? Amen. <laughs>